Only a handful of countries have aircraft carriers in their arsenals. They form an exclusive club, one whose members who have decided their interests stretch so far from their own waters they need to put air power at sea. Broadly speaking, there are three kinds of aircraft carrier today, larger aircraft carriers that carry both fixed-wing aircraft and helicopters, smaller carriers that operate helicopters, and amphibious ships that have full-length flight decks, hangars, and carry helicopters. Some of the world's carriers are new, bristling with planes and capable of circumnavigating the globe without refueling. Others are a half-century old or older, carry just a handful of obsolete planes, and rarely leave base. The combat system for the Navy's newest and costliest warship, the 13 billion US dollar Gerald R. Ford, has yet to demonstrate that it can effectively defend the aircraft carrier from anti-ship missiles and other threats, according to a new assessment by the Pentagon's testing office. Mixed performance by missile interceptors, radar, and data dissemination systems on a testing vessel limited the ability to destroy replicas of incoming weapons even though sensor systems satisfactorily detected, tracked, and engaged the targets, according to the report obtained by Bloomberg News in advance of its release. The carrier built by Huntington Ingalls Industries Incorporated is still dogged as well by the poor or unknown reliability of its aircraft launch and recovery systems, according to the five-page report. And recent shock tests to assess the vulnerability of key systems identified several design shortfalls not previously discovered, the testing office said. It said the Navy has already identified several survivability opportunities to improve the four-carrier class of ships against underwater threat engagements. The persistent shortcomings undercut the Navy's hope to showcase the Ford as the first in a new class of nuclear-powered carriers that can project U.S. power globally and are more combat-capable, reliable, and affordable to operate than the Nimitz class it's replacing. The latest assessment raises new questions for Pentagon officials and lawmakers about how fully the Navy will demonstrate improvements before the Ford is deployed in mid-September on its first patrol with aircraft and escort vessels. The report, which contains unclassified and controlled unclassified information and has been circulated to the Navy, found that only a limited assessment of the combat system's effectiveness is possible at this point. It said Nicholas Gurdon, the new head of the testing office, plans to send Congress an interim report on the Ford's self-defense capabilities by September 30th. The Naval Sea Systems Command said in a statement that it welcomed the opportunity to review and provide comment on the assessment draft. Overall, it said, recent post-delivery testing of the Ford indicate the risk of system reliability impacting mission accomplishment is decreasing. Chinese Challenge Answering concerns about the Ford's defense system with its dual-band radar, data fusion, and other advanced capabilities takes on added urgency as China increases its inventory of patrol boats, frigates, cruisers, and conventional submarines with advanced anti-ship cruise missiles. The Navy's three tests so far of the Ford's self-defense system on board a specialized vessel designed to evaluate performance were not adequate to assess the combat system's capability against supersonic anti-ship cruise missiles and subsonic maneuvering missiles, and there were no future test events planned against threats that could provide additional data, according to the testing office. The vessel's Gatling gun-like system experienced numerous reliability failures that in several cases prevented the system from executing its mission, the test office said. After a series of additional evaluations and exercises with the Ford's air wing, the plan is for the carrier to, to visit multiple theaters of operation with multiple allies by the end of summer, Rear Admiral James Downey, the Navy's program executive officer for aircraft carriers, told reporters Friday. He said the Navy is confident in the vessel's combat systems. She's been engaged against her required threats, and we've done those tests at sea. They've been evaluated, and she's achieved her certification in the combat systems area, Downey said. Lingering Questions The testing office said the Ford is unlikely to achieve its goal for the number of sorties it can launch over a 24-hour period, saying it's based on unrealistic assumptions. It also said that during 8,157 takeoffs and recoveries through last year, the carrier's new electromagnetic catapult system made by General Atomics demonstrated a reliability of 272 launches between operational mission failure, or well below its required 4,166. 
Similarly, its system to snag landing aircraft demonstrated a 41 landing reliability rate well below the requirement of 16,500, the testing office said. The Naval Sea Systems Command said that during the Ford's recent at-sea phase, the carrier completed all required testing, accomplished work ahead of plan, improved system reliability for new technologies, and served as an East Coast platform for conducting pilot carrier qualifications for over 400 newly qualified and requalifying pilots. More than 8,100 launch and landing operations highlighted the Ford's increasing capability and provide growing confidence that a fully trained Ford crew and embarked air wing will achieve the required sorties generation rate, the command said.